اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا حبيب الله رب العالمين بن قاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعاله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعنة الدائم على أدائهم أجمعين من ألان إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Greetings and felicitations uh, to all our viewers, to all the lovers of Ahl Bayt Alimussalam upon this eve, upon this Eid of uh, Eid Mab'as, a very, very uh, special day, uh, the 27th of Rajab, uh, 40 years after the Amul Fil, the year of the elephants, the Prophet was asked to declare uh, his prophecy to mankind. Uh, we have a, a very special dua for the eve of Mab'as, uh, which comes from an Imam Masum, uh, which clearly points out to the unique aspect of this night. Uh, as it begins by saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka bitajalli al-azam fi hadhi al-layla min al-shahr al-mu'adham. O oh Allah, for the sake of tajalli al-azam, that great theophany, that manifested, that came about fi hadhi layla upon this night fi shahr al muazzam in this great month of muazzam this great month which is the month of Rajab the 27th in order to discuss the significance of Mab'as the day on which Prophet declared his prophecy Iqra, as we all know, the Qur'an started to descend from the Lohe Mahfuz to the Prophet. We have invited in our studio uh, Sheikh Ahmad Hanif. Would, Sheikh, welcome. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. And we will be talking about uh, Mab'as tonight. And I uh, was reflecting upon <coughs> this dua, which is Tajalli Azam. You know, Tajalli itself is has its own, you know, philosophical, mystical reality, tajalli, you know. And it's not just a tajalli, but it's saying tajalli azam. It's like the greatest, one of the greatest tajalli. Obviously, when we are talking about tajalli, it is a manifestation of that divine beauty, of that divine mercy. You know, just the same as how Hazrat Musa alayhi salam ask Allah that he wanted to see him, then God did that tajalli, you know, that manifestation, that reflection upon that mountain. So it has that, you know, very essential reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within it. So let's discuss this a bit on different levels of this tajalli azam. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim and uh, assalamu alaikum to all the viewers out there. Um, and congratulations also on the eve of uh, the, the uh, anniversary of Mab'ath. Um, Tajali is usually um, mentioned with respect to the, as you say, the manifestation of God's presence in general um, in the earth um, or in the realm of creation. And indeed, for example, the entirety of creation is a tajalli of God. In other words, uh, it is a uh, creative, uh, insofar as it is in the realm of creation, um, of the manifestation of God's names on the lower level. Um, and uh, we know that in Islamic cosmology, we have a hierarchies of being. And the highest being, the, high, the highest manifestation of God, the highest manifestation of the divine names is the human being in general. And specifically, 
uh, human beings who are chosen by God, human beings who are sent by God. And uh, what the Imam is saying is that the, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, and along with the Holy Quran um, are the highest and most, uh, the, the greatest uh, manifestation of God. Um, and so uh, there is almost a, a, a certain kind of, a, the, the prophet uh, functions in a symbolic sense, you know, in the sense that, you know, he would be a manifestation of God without being God, but he would be a manifestation of God in the world, a manifestation of God's mercy, a manifestation of God's might as uh, encapsulated in the person of a human being. Right. So, so, so Mab'ath is the, is the, is the momentous, the momentous uh, moment of the manifestation of this great sign in the realm of creation. Right. And I, th I think that's why it, 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 uh, it's, it kind of goes towards saying, well, Mursil al you know, uh, you know uh, we are asking first for the sake of this Tajalli Azam, Right, this greatest manifestation. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, we are seeking that as a means to connect to God. Mm -hmm. You know, what have been revealed, that tajalli, we are taking that as a vehicle, as a medium, to really connect to You, O Allah Subhanahu mm -hmm. Wa Taala. Just like how we have dua -e samat, in which we recite that. O oh Allah, for the sake of that tajalli that took place upon the mountain of Tur. Mm. You know, we give right. the different names of God. You know, we, we take the different names of God, you know, for this name, for this sake, for that sake. And then it points, uh, then it looks like, O oh Allah, for the sake of that tajalli, that theophany, that happened on the mountain of Tur for mm. Musa, mm. salam, right? And... Uh, you know, these tajalliyat, you know, these manifestation or these theophanies, uh, they are different in terms of their substance. You know, it's not like the same thing. You know, it's like, like me looking at the mirror, I look and I leave and I come back and it's me again. But you are talking about that infinite being, mm. which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. right? From that maghzan ghayb you know, from that hidden treasure, that tajalli, that theophany takes place. Mm. And as it becomes very particular, just like, for example, there are different, you know, there are different names of God, you know, Ghafoor Rahim, you know, Qahar, you know, Musawwirul, you know, Mudrikul, you know, all that. And every name has its unique tajalli, you know, has its unique reality mm -hmm. to it. Uh, so, what had manifested on that mountain of Tur? for Hazrat Musa salam, will not manifest again. It was a unique thing. Mm. So we seek that as a means to reach you. Right. So the same way, Allahumma inni asaluka bit tajalli azam. Right. We are seeking, Ya Allah, for this great tajalli, which is azam, in this month. Now this points out to that this month is a special month. Few nights are left now. You know, if we can fast, ibadat, you know, it's, it's time to really mm. do this stuff. And not only that, it says, Wal mursil al mukarram as you said, that insan is the is the greatest manifestation mm. of Khuda wa Ta'ala, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth, being the Khalifatullah, right? The vicegerent of God, he is the manifestation of. So from one side we are taking these two heavyweights. One is the tajalli azam, right? And then, wal mursil al mukarram, an tu salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad, wa an taqfir lana ma anta bihi min naalam wa man yaalamu wa la naalam. Then we say that, oh Allah, for the sake of tajalli and for the sake of Rasul, send greetings and salutations on Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, and then the dua continues. You know? uh, while you were mentioning this, <coughs> uh, something very interesting occurred to me. Um, the Tajalli on the Mount of Tur um, did not manifest 
in a human being. It manifested in a bush, mm. you know? Um, and, uh, you know, when we reflect upon Islam as the unifying theory of religion, in the sense that all true religions are found in Islam, <clears throat> we find also that uh, true religions is something that is open to our own understanding. You know, they, they must have certain cri criteria or characteristics that, that um, lead to the true religion. Well, what I'm getting at is a, one very prominent religion or religious uh, strain among human beings is shamanism. You know, um, and shamanism is the kind of religion that is... Uh, the natives that, ones, the, right? the, the native, native, Americans, native, native yeah. Americans, Siberians, you know, um, Northern Russians and so on. You know, um, uh, Africans, people in the Amazon. It's almost um, uh, a sort of a, 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 the, one of the most basic forms of the appearance of religion. Right. All right. The and pure. you find that in many of these shamanic religions, um, they have the coming of a special messenger that is not always human. You know, it could be an animal, it could be a plant. You know, it could be many things, you see? And um, uh, it seems strange to Muslims that they would have such a, uh, a, a special person or being among them that is not necessarily a human being, you see? But the burning bush of Hazrat Musa, alayhi salam, shows us that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, could choose something other than human to present to human beings, um, you know, his, his, his revelation or his, his guidance for truth. And it's very interesting that you say, uh, I think it's very true as well, that um, each tajalli, each divine tajalli is unique for that particular occasion. I would, I would, I would extend that to say unique for that particular frame of, 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 of re religious reference, you see? For example, Zat Tajali, um, in, in the time of Hazrat Musa, you know, would have a particular manifestation. But Hazrat Musa, alayhi salam, is a prophet, you know, and he becomes uh, a, a Tajali himself, you know. Um, and that this is within the prophetic type of, uh, of system, uh, or the Abrahamic prophetic type of system. And you would find, for example, according to the shamanistic type of system, you know, um, it, it, it deals with nature as book, nature as divine book, for example. You know, it, it deals with all of the things in nature as uh, living, concrete, divine signs. And so it would take that particular form within that particular context. Maybe from tribe to tribe or nation to nation, it, it, it might have different manifestations, but it might have different manifestations within the context of that particular religion, if you know what I mean. Yes, of course. Yeah, and then I was also looking at this tajalliyat, or when a person is uh, somehow get the color of God, mm -hmm. as the Quran says, Allah mina sibga, you know, in Surah Baqarah, where God says that the best color is the color of God. Now, this color, or this tajalli, or this sort of relationship, as soon as that happens, that becomes a medium by which man connects to God. Mm. You know, tajalliya azam for Musa alayhi salam, mm. you know, which becomes the reason for them to connect mm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or in dua, for example, we say, okay, you know, for the sake of that tajalli, oh Allah, grant me this. Yes. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a medium to connect to God. Now here on the Mbisat, on the night of Baisat, early mornings of, you know, uh, 27th, we have Iqra, that's Tajalli, mm -hmm. that's the book which mm -hmm. comes on the 27th, beginning of this book, right. you know, which becomes that Tajalli, the word of Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala started. That is the Tajalli, that right. is the manifestation, that is the reflection. And on, well, Nabi Mursal as well, you have the, you know, the Prophet as well, mm -hmm. right? So the, the Prophet, and also the book mm -hmm. becomes the means for human beings to connect to God. Right. You see? Yes. And then that is why as this 
uh, becomes the means even the day and the night is filled with barakah and blessing. That's why you have Amal of the 27th. As Imam Jawad Ali Salam says that, you know, to fast on this day, you know, is the reward or the best of days where the sun have not, you know, shine on any mm -hmm. other than this, for right. example, right? And the reward is so much, you know, there are like few fasts which are highly recommended to fast, you know, Ghadir and this and, you know, uh, you know Arafa or uh, 15th of Shaban, for example. Other than the wajib fast, the mustahab fast, right, the recommended fast is one of them is the 27th of Rajab. So the whole day, the actions of the day, the rituals of the day be, is, is blessed with, is blessed with connecting us to God. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I mean, uh, I think it's, it's, it's quite, for a lot of people, I think it should be quite logical, you know, because um, everything is related. You know, everything must be, in a sense, aligned or be in the right relationship in order for, 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 for things to manifest. You know, you can't have plants growing if there's no water in the soil and no sun shining and so forth. And I think, um, you know, basically uh, what the ahadith and the, uh, the du'as show is that, is that there is what we would call sacred time. You know, there's sacred time, there's sacred space, there's sacred, uh, sacred objects. You know, and all of these uh, come together for particular purposes. So, uh, for the appearing of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa that must take place in a sacred time, which is Rajab. You know, um, and of especially on the day of the twenty seventh. You know, and it must it, it takes place in a sacred space. You know, in, 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 in which case it is Medina, you know, or, you know, um, no, but Mecca, Mecca. Or Mecca, you know, and, and, and um, you know, uh, you know these, these things all come together in order to, to manifest uh, that particular great thing. So when we take advantage of that time, we are sort of entering into uh, a, a state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of aspects of this day, Mabas, a lot of things comes about that we could really contemplate and ponder upon this day and what uh, it has given us. Mm. Uh, and even the duas kind of point out to, like for example as the dua, Allahumma barik lana fi laylatina hadihi allati bi sharaf al risala. Mm. You know, with the sharafat, mm. with the purity of risalat. Wa fadhaltaha bi karamatika Ajlalda, mm -hmm. you know, with your karama, that honor. You know, this 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 phenomenon of in Lakat Karamna Hubani Adam, as Allah says in the Quran, certainly we have given karama mm -hmm. to Bani Adam. Nobility. We have, yeah, yeah. And honored them. You have given them that status. You know, and this I really ends up with after mentioning about that. You know, Hamallahu fil Bar wal Bahar. You know, we carried them upon the, you know, on the ocean and on earth, and we give them the secrets to really bring out the best from the earth. And then it talks about that Nabuwa. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that, that they have been given wa karam tana. You know, they have they have given this karama, this blessing as well for human being. You know, it's indeed, uh, you know, uh, this month which brings about that karama must be that month of karama as the dua also points out awwalul ashhuril huram wa akram tanabe min bainil umam you know you have you know you have made this month an honorable month because something honorable is beginning which is the 27th which is the quran so obviously with this descent of the quran with the nomination of the prophet uh, uh, you know, uh, if we can probably reflect where as even for those, for example, who die and who are raised, you know, or those who die who enter Barzakh, we say that, you know, they've been given, they've been Mab'us, you know, they've been basically nominated, mm -hmm. given that position, given that Maqam. 
So, Prophet was given that, that there, and it is also the day that he is uh, asked to declare, for instance, you know, that, that sort of that he has become the Prophet, mm -hmm. you know. Although, you know, the reason I say declare, it is a nomination indeed, because we believe that he was a Prophet, you know, Awwalu ma khalq Allahi nuri, you know, first thing God created mm -hmm. is the Muhammadan light. You know, uh, I mean, it's not like how some tend to have the belief that, oh, Iqra took place in the cave of Hira on the 27th, for example, and then after that, Prophet don't know what happened. He went to his wife, you know, he's trembling, he has a fever, he complains. And in doubt. Yeah, he's in doubt. What does this happen? What did he see? Then she takes him to the doctors, you know, the tabib, and he says, oh, something similar which happened to the previous prophets, for example, wahi, revelation has happened. So, I mean, this is a bit strange type of understanding. It doesn't really make sense. You know, prophet was fully aware. It's the point of connection of the, uh, you know, and the preparation of the ummah and of mankind to really take that task. Uh, and for the Prophet too, you know, as the Quran says in Surah Hashr, that Allahu anzalna hadha al-Quran ala jabalin la ra'ayatu khashan mutasaddian min khashiyatillah. You know, if this Quran was revealed upon the jabal, upon the mountain, it would have been shattered, you know, into dust with the khushu, you know, with the awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it was the heart of the Prophet mm -hmm. that 40 years obviously Prophet was in immense exercising spirituality, going up the mountain of Hira, climbing up that mountain in that cave of Hira, right, meditating, praying and worshipping and really yearning the Lord and asking for the mercy. And he, it was who managed to really download that Quran, bring that Quran, you know, for mankind. Imagine if there wasn't a Quran today, mm. what would be the state of mankind? I like that word, download the Quran. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is a very 21st century way of saying Nuzul. Yeah, Nuzul. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. true. But I think the Mab'ath is um, something that is uh, that goes beyond Muslims, you know, in the sense that Mab'ath is a good tiding. You know, for all for the entire world, for all mankind, yes. for the entire yes. world. Yeah. I mean, regardless of whether you know secular society, modern civilization, accept the contributions of Islam or not on that horizontal sense, mm. on this just just a mm. pakali dunyavi sense. You mm. know, forget the manavi right. and spirituality and the levels of you know tawhid that have been unveiled because of the Prophet, you know, the amount of understanding, the precise understanding of Tawheed, what Tawheed really means in the most crystallized form that we have in the Qur'an. Apart from that, just if we look at the horizontal development of insan and humanity and human civilization, mm -hmm. is really so much Qur'an had to give, Muslims have to give in terms right. of the contribution. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for example, you know, um, I do, without Islam, uh, most likely human society would have been far more backward today than uh, with respect to things like knowledge, you know, um, technology, um, philosophy, and so many things. You know, so this Mab'ath is really a good tidings that brings human beings out of the darkness of ignorance, wherever they might be, influenced by the teachings of Islam and the progress of Islam. Yeah? Um, I think, but also this also happens on a uh, formal theological level and even on a mystical level. Uh, so you'd find that um, uh, many mystical schools in Christianity, for example, have been influenced by Islamic spirituality. Um, you know, you find also that in the area of theology and uh, religious, religious uh, philosophy, I say religious philosophy uh, because I think 
the Islamic uh, teachings, Islamic, uh, if one can put it this way, uh, religious uh, slash also secular type of thinking uh, influenced uh, how Christians and Jews and so forth uh, looked at their own religion in a much more positive and rational way. Uh, when we see the Muslim um, uh, rule of Spain, you know, uh, what it contributed was a significant amount of knowledge, secular and also spiritual. To the extent that you know Ibn Maimun or Maimonides, that 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 Jewish uh, philosopher, was very much influenced by Islamic uh, theology and Islamic philosophy and so forth, uh, which he uh, interpreted, carried over into Judaism, and makes him one of makes him one of the greatest sages Judaism has ever known. And yes, he came up in this particular type of environment. Even today, you find a resurrection of. Um, you know, theological ideas um, with respect to Tawheed and oneness of God and so forth, even today, that um, use a lot of um, Islamic ideas. In fact, one such strain of thought is called Kalam, the Kalam argument, you know, the, the, uh, which is being resurrected now to be able to counter uh, challenges to Christianity and so forth. All of these things go back to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Yeah, and uh, that's why, I mean, it is so much, you know, in that sort of spark of light that contain in it, you know, all of these kamalat, all of these perfections, right. you know, heavenly and also secular and uh, like for example, even you're talking about theology, I was I got reminded of, you know, how uh, Saint Thomas Aquinas, for example, you know, and Ibn Sina, mm. you know, very similar arguments that we find in terms of the proof of mm. of Tawheed, you know, which Ibn Sina extracts that from the Quran, mm. you know, from the teachings of the Prophet. Mm. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So it, it was, uh, uh, you know, in, in, the ho in, the, in the nutshell, I, I would rather call it, a, like as you were saying, it's a day of uh, cele celebration, what you were mentioning, it's a day, you were just mentioning. Celebration is fine. Yeah, celebration is a day to mark. Mm -hmm. It's a great uh, day. It's a great it's, day yeah. for all of humanity. Yes. Uh, it, I, I, it's a, I, I would say hope. Mm -hmm. It's a day of hope. Mm -hmm. You know, for for all of mankind mm. to be hopeful in oneself that you know that journey to really reach mm. from the mystical point of mm. view have been made possible through the Quran yes. through the Prophet and Ahl Bayt salam that they will be able to really reach to that level that potential that insan have mm. to because you know this journey is really a journey of Tawheed mm. You know, knowing Tawheed, knowing God. You know, while doing along so, you know, all of these other things, you know, tend to happen. You know. Mm. Now, as you said, that it's a it's a very unique, uh, you know, day and day to be remembered uh, for all of mankind. Now, if you can point out to the social aspect of this Mabas have given, mm. perhaps. Mm. Well, um, you know, again, Mabas um, occurs at a point in time where uh, it is said the world was steeped in darkness. And one of the aspects of this darkness um, is not only darkness in terms of religious knowledge, but darkness also in terms of human relationships. You know, you have a time where you have great d d dictators, you have, um, um, you know, women being oppressed, you know, uh, the, the, the innocent, the children being um, also oppressed and so forth. You have this type of environment. You know, so you have, for example, the environment in Arabia, which is, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's like uh, almost like a whole area of gang activity, you know, where you had vendettas taking place over centuries, you know, between families ca being carried on. You had the oppression of women, anarchy, for example, almost yeah. anarchy in a sense, you know. Yeah. And so this religion comes 
and uh, creates an order, a divine order. You know, um, and it's interesting that even those people who did not believe in Islam, you know, um, had no choice but to think in Islamic terms with respect to governorship, with respect to civil society, and so forth and so on. We know, for example, people like Muawiyah and Yazid and many of the people of Banu Umayya, you know, didn't really uh, uh, give any great credence to the prophethood of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi, and the truth of Islam. Nevertheless, they found it extremely instrumental, you know, uh, and they couldn't depart from it. Instrumental that Islamic law and Islamic social organization and, 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 and morals and so forth, you know, were the superior things of that day and they had to implement it and had to, to support it. And not only this, but Islam also um, uh, influenced non-Islamic society. It is also taught, taught non-Islamic society, for example, the, uh, the, the, the importance of hygiene, physical hygiene. You know? It is the Muslims who taught non-Islamic society um, you know, better ways to build homes, it is Muslim society that, for example, had a very profound uh, uh, you know, inf influence upon law you know, in, in, in different societies and so forth. You know? So again, Mab'ath is, is, when we commemorate Mab'ath, Mab'ath, we commemorate all this particular uh, influence upon society as well. Right. Wow, wonderful. I mean, I think uh, it, the program, you know, to really discuss the different aspects of Mabas is, 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 is too short. So perhaps, I mean, what we have tried to do here is kind of look at the social aspect we just, you know, nicely uh, laid down, by, you know, pointed out to you, by you. Uh, then also the, you know, how we started uh, discussing about the, uh, you know, mystical aspect in regards to the Tajalli and the reality of Tajalli. Well, I think uh, we better uh, end here and then perhaps maybe in our future programs uh, we could really discuss the uh, kind of point out to the, uh, the you know, the, uh, the beauty of Mabas, you know, probably we could lead the other programs and then kind of remind our viewers that, you know, see if it wasn't for Mabas really we wouldn't be right. happening, uh, having this type of understanding. Well, thank you very much, uh, Sheikh. Uh, it was it was indeed uh, uh, you know a pleasure to be with you and to be with our viewers as well to uh, to look into uh, this divine uh, day divine reality uh, which is Mabas and we hope uh, and we will uh, we hope with this dua of Mabas itself uh, on the night uh, that Allahumma fasalli ala Muhammadin wa ali wa jaal yaqina fi qalbi wa nura fi basari. ونسيحة في صدري وذكرك بالليل والنهار على لساني ورزقا واسعة غير ممنون إن شاء الله من الله سبحانه وتعالى forgive us all and also all our marhumin we will take your leave now and we will uh, congratulate you once again before we leave and uh, see you again thank you very much السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم